The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus. But the Pharisees and scribes began to complain, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So to them, Jesus addressed this parable. A man had two sons, and the younger son said to his father, Father, give me the share of your estate that should come to me. So the father divided the property between them. After a few days, the younger son collected all his belongings and set off to a distant country where he squandered his inheritance on a life of dissipation. When he had freely spent everything, a severe famine struck that country and he found himself in dire need. So he hired himself out to one of the local citizens who sent him to his farm to tend the swine. And he longed to eat his fill of the pods on which the swine fed, but no one gave him any. Coming to his senses, he thought, how many of my father's hired workers have more than enough food to eat, but here I am, dying from hunger. I shall get up and go to my father, and I shall say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as you would treat one of your hired workers. So he got up and went back to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But his father ordered his servants, quickly bring the finest robe and put it on him, put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Take the fattened calf and slaughter it. Then let us celebrate with a feast because this son of mine was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. Then the celebration began. Now the older son had been out in the field and on his way back, as he neared the house, he heard the sound of music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what this might mean. The servant said to him, your brother has returned and your father has slaughtered the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. He became angry, and when he refused to enter the house, his father came out and pleaded with him. He said to his father in reply, Look, all these years I served you, and not once did I disobey your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat to feast on with my friends. But when your son returns, who swallowed up your property with prostitutes, for him you slaughter the fattened calf. He said to him, My son, you are here with me always. Everything I have is yours. But now we must celebrate and rejoice, because your brother was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. (laughs) 
Today we celebrate Laetare Sunday. We take a slight pause from the somber tones of Lent and look ahead ever so slightly in anticipation of Easter. Lent is a time to refresh and awaken our faith and see a rebirth in our spiritual lives. Our rose-colored vestments, along with these peace lilies at the altar, point to the joy of Easter, where each of us can rejoice in Christ, rejoice in the Christ who suffered, died, and rose from the dead, where in the abundance, infinite abundance, of the mercy of Christ, we can be reconciled to the Father. With God's help, we overcome sin, making it possible for you and me to share in God's graces and his his eternal life, to share in the Father's overwhelming love for us. Our readings speak to an awakening and rebirth in our relationship with God. In our first reading, we hear, The Lord said to Joshua, Today I have removed the reproach of Egypt from you. The Israelites no longer ate manna in the desert, but from the produce of the land. There had been a new beginning in the promised land. St. Paul tells us in the second reading, Whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. And all of this from God, who has reconciled us to himself through Christ. The message coming from our readings today suggests that we should see Lent more like the season of spring, a time of awakening and new beginnings, a new growth in our relationship with the Father through what Jesus did for us in his suffering, death, and resurrection. Christ himself gives us his great parable of mercy in today's Gospel from Luke, the parable of the prodigal son. The prodigal son is the story of the joy and the new beginnings of the younger son as he is reconciled to his father. The point is that each of us is, in fact, a prodigal son. In this parable, the father's mercy is lavishly poured out on the son, giving the son the new beginning he hoped for with his father. And so it is with us. Christ tells us in our gospel that today, a new beginning, a new relationship with the Father is possible through his infinite mercy and love for us. The Pharisees and scribes notice that tax collectors and sinners have gathered around to listen to Jesus. They complain, saying, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. It is precisely the sinner, like you and me, whom Christ wants to attract. Jesus came into this world to seek the sinner. In reply to the Pharisees, we are told the youngest son asks his father for his share of his property. This request is out of the ordinary and even shameful for the son to demand his inheritance before his father's death. Even so, the father gives the son his share of the property. We know the son dishonors his father even more by squandering the inheritance. Like the younger son, we begin to fall away from God when we selfishly turn away from him in sin and squander away the inheritance of grace he has given us. 
we turn away time after time after time in big ways and small ways. We imagine that we would be happier if we could live according to our own passions. Each time we sin, we hurt God and dishonor him like the younger son dishonored his father. In our sinfulness, God lets us go our own way, for we have free will. The more we live according to our own passion, the more dissatisfied and unhappy we become. The younger son's motives are not particularly upright, but nonetheless, it is in his material need for food and shelter that starts to bring about his conversion. Coming to his senses, he decides to return to his father, where he knows that even his father's hired workers have more than enough food to eat. To be reconciled to his father, the prodigal son plans to tell his father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as you would treat one of your hired workers. How do we become reconciled to God? Like the prodigal son, it sometimes takes dire circumstances for us to begin to think about turning back to God. When times are good, we tend to forget about God. When times are bad, we seek to come back to him. We begin to return to God when we examine our own heart. As a sinner, we must not lose faith in the Father's mercy and not despair. Christ has given us the means to be reconciled to God. In his mercy, Christ has given us the sacrament of reconciliation. Like the father who catches sight of his younger son while he is still a long way off. God is always looking for us to come to him in this great sacrament of mercy. When we go to confession, we are responding to God's invitation and grace to come to him. When we accept his invitation, God comes forward to welcome us. He wants to forgive us. God is so extravagant in his love for us, he wants to put the finest robe on us, a ring on our finger, and sandals on our feet. He wants to give us a share of his eternal life. In his love, he so desires to keep us close to him. He wants to give each of us a new beginning in our relationship with him. This Lent, he wants to make us a new creation. It matters not the sin. We may think we are not worthy to return to God. The devil tempts us to think we do not need God. But God is always faithful and is looking for us to be reconciled to him like the father and the youngest son. We are called to embrace and return the joy that comes when our sins are forgiven and we return to God. In the sacrament of reconciliation, God looks for us to come to him and he welcomes us. Saint Pope John Paul II describes the sacrament of reconciliation as the act of the prodigal son who returns to the father and is welcomed by him with the kiss of peace. It is an act of honesty and courage. It is an act of entrusting oneself beyond sin to the mercy that forgives. As we continue our Lenten journey, let us take a lesson from Christ in the parable of the prodigal son. Let us seek 
to be reconciled to God and enter into the Father's joy where we can be refreshed, our faith awakened, and our spiritual lives reborn.